Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janal Norvell. This edition's top stories. The island's Prime Minister calls for an immediate solution to climate change. The long-awaited road improvement project has begun. St. Lucian's gets set for Creole Heritage Month. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. As the United Nations Climate Action Summit got underway in New York, plans to address the global climate emergency are being thrashed out. CARICOM Chairman and Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, made his contribution at the morning session on Monday, September 23, 2019. Anisia Antoine reports. The Caribbean region has in recent times experienced the worst impacts of climate change. Take September 1st, 2019, for example, when Hurricane Dorian slammed into the Bahamas, killing over 50 people and leaving tens of thousands displaced. The Category 5 hurricane stalled over the Abaco Islands and Grand Bahama for approximately 48 hours, bringing life-threatening floods and storm surges. Small island developing states have repeatedly called for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, to reclassify developing countries so they can access much-needed funds to mitigate and adapt to climate change. At the UN Climate Action Summit, CARICOM Chairman and Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney said that time has run out on our islands and our requests continue to go unanswered. We have said repeatedly that the OECD needs to change the way it classifies developing countries and that we've asked them to adopt the vulnerability index that was established in 1989 by the Commonwealth Secretariat, 1989. Two, that there needs to be a dedicated fund. So even though there are funds that were allocated yesterday to double up for the Green Climate Fund, the SIDS continue to lament the fact, the difficulty of us drawing down on those funds. Three, that once we establish those funds, the governance procedures that now manage those funds needs to change to take into consideration that the next hurricane season is upon us and that we can't wait for a typical five-year project cycle. And lastly, that how we classify the debt that we're going to incur to invest in this infrastructure cannot go on our books because what we may gain in physical climate change resilience, we're now going to lose in economic resilience. But it's not just the cost of climate mitigation and adaptation, it's the additional costs that small island developing states are now being faced with, including insurance and refugees. When I see small businesses in my country, that their cost of insurance now has become 20% of their operating cost, we're now getting to where it's economically unsustainable to be able to have insurance. There is a new cost of these hurricanes, which we had not anticipated. And that is one that Prime Minister Motley alluded to, which is refugees. In the case of Bahamas, 50,000 people are gonna to have to be evacuated. When we say temporarily, we're talking about a year and a half to two years before those countries can be re rebuilt. Who is going to sustain those people? Where are they going to go to school? What job are they going to have? These are the practical realities that we're dealing with on ground zero of SIDS. Honorable Chastney implored the major agencies involved to find a solution to help solve the problem of climate change. Climate change does not discriminate. It has started with us because we're close to the equator, but it's soon coming to your doorsteps. Allow the SIDS to be that lab of figuring out how we're going to be able to deal with this climate change issue. And through our solutions, you will also be helping yourself in the future. The Climate Action Summit took place on September 23rd at the United Nations 74th General Assembly in New York. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. 
Meantime, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney continued to lobby on behalf of small island developing states, SIDS, when it comes to the issue of blacklisting and climate resilience. During a bilateral meeting with Ireland Deputy Prime Minister, His Excellency Simone Conveni. Prime Minister Chastney engaged the Ireland Deputy Prime Minister on the sidelines of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly about EU decisions that directly impact the ability of small islands to be competitive. He explained the issues faced by the Caribbean with correspondence banking and the EU's blacklisting of St. Lucia and other islands when it comes to taxation. The two leaders also discussed the access to funds for resilience building and encouraging the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, to use the vulnerability index for countries established by the Commonwealth. Ireland expressed interest in assisting St. Lucia in finding practical solutions to climate resilience and cooperation in the areas of agriculture and education. The much-anticipated island-wide road improvement project has begun. The two-and-a-half-year project, which is being funded by the Republic of China-Taiwan, will see improvements to 48 roads spanning some 101 kilometers. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, and by extension the Government of St. Lucia, is undertaking a comprehensive road improvement project. The project will see the full rehabilitation of roads throughout the length and breadth of the island. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, Ivor Danielle, indicated that while the infrastructure teams have been conducting daily potholing initiatives so as to allow the motoring public the smoothest commutes, the roads are in need of extensive improvements. We've carried out an assessment and based on our assessment through our road, road maintenance management system, we found that most of our primary roads and secondary roads are within sort of fair to, to relatively good condition. Uh, we've made some, because that's, that's be, because we've made some improvements to it, the tertiary roads are in a deplorable state and we definitely for some time now have been working to improve the conditions. On a daily basis we have our maintenance, our routine maintenance team, um, team going out there conducting potholing works and improvements as best as possible. And we can really tell that the pavement is fatigued and a number of the pavements require an overlay. An overlay um, that is really a maintenance that is really needed at this point. But you can well imagine that the government has some fiscal constraints. And so we have to be at it and try to ensure that we keep it in a measurable condition. The ministry assured members of the public that all roads will be addressed. The contractor on the project is the Overseas Engineering and Construction Corporation, OECC, and works will be supervised by the Ministry of Infrastructure. Project manager and supervising engineer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Naomi Sherry, provided some insight into the scope of works to be undertaken. She explained proper measures are being taken to ensure the safety of the public at every turn and utility companies have also been informed of the works taking place in case they are to respond. As PS has indicated, subcontractors have been um, engaged for the design and construction of the works. The scope of the works would involve um, the rehabilitation of the entire pavement, the base and sub-base, as well as retaining walls where necessary, the bridges, culverts, drainage, road markings, guardrails. Communications Officer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, Shannon Labon, lists the roads to be rehabilitated. The Piat Road in Grand Nivier is marked for some improvement. The Marisville Grand Nivier Union, the Casabar Road, that project has started. Lower and Upper New Development Road in Sufra. Deramo to Labon Junction. The Blushar Road and Spring Road in Miku, Bonlobel Denry Village, Larry Trat in Morshi, Kako to Jira, Pebouche Gap to Monsito via Laguerre, Pebouche to Monsito via Plateau, Savan Aho, Blackstone in Jackmel, Tetchime in Vana, the Mac Road, Soufra Fosse Jacques, Esperance, Diamonds Road through to Soufra, La Pansé to Mondador, Green Mountain Road, Ring Road, High Street to Mont Gerald Ring Road, Hospital Road, Ticolor to Basse Joseph, the road to the back of Mont Bakery before the old Kentucky Road, the link road from Mont Repo Highway to Passias Combined School, Passias Loba, Grass Street, Mont Repo, Main Roads in the Miku Village, St. Marie Road in Miku, Flamboyant Way, 
Golf Park, Cap Estate, Chaussee Road, St. Jude's Highway, Marshall Road, through to Waterworks Road, Peru Bellevue, Zabo to Bellevue, OJ St. Jude's, the Norbert Road, in Groselet, Norbert to Cafe, Lafayette to Cafe, Old Military Road number two, Bossy Joux, Bella Rosa, Bonte, Access Road, and the New Union Roundabout. The road improvement project will cost a total of 42 million U.S. dollars. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The government of the Republic of Korea has donated U.S. $120,000 in the form of a grant to the St. Lucia Fire Service. The grant forms part of the budget of Korea's International Development Corporation Fund for 2019. Ambassador-designate of the Republic of Korea to St. Lucia, His Excellency Sang Munap, stated that the donation will enhance the capacity of the fire service towards national disaster response in St. Lucia. Our two nations have values on the global stage, like the United Nations, in the ability to adapt change and foster climate uh, resilience in a manner that uh, advocate the uh, uh, sustainable growth of each country. So I hope uh, this contribution by the Korean government would further solidify our two countries' commitments uh, toward managing climate change and the development of climate resilience as well. The handing over ceremony took place on Wednesday, 25th of September 2019 at the Department of External Affairs. Chief Fire Officer Joseph Joseph expressed gratitude to the government of Korea for their contribution. I can assure you that this contribution will certainly be put into effective use. Our department has identified some items which will serve to enhance our response capabilities, mainly in the areas of fire suppression and rescue operations. Fire suppression will get a boost from the purchase of portable pumps, gas detectors, while um, jaws, and li jaws of life sorry, equip equipment will be um, purchased to enhance our rescue operations. We will also be acquiring um, a vehicle um, to assist with our emergency and non-emergency transportation needs. The government of St. Lucia and the government of the Republic of Korea recently commemorated 40 years of diplomatic relations. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. When a hurricane is approaching, safety of life and the preservation of livelihoods is most important. We should take heed. Create proper drainage along the contour of your farm. Harvest and store all crops that could be harvested. And if possible to sell any produce, do so. Reinforce farmhouses by using screws or hurricane ties to secure the roof and ensure that it is boarded up. Remove all plastic covers from greenhouses and store properly in your reinforced farmhouse. Secure all official agriculture and farming business documents and policies in sealed plastic coverings. And perhaps consider taking out a crop insurance policy to secure your agro livelihood. Take all possible precaution ahead of a hurricane or tropical storm. This is the hurricane season and we should be prepared. A message brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives. Welcome back. St. Lucia is preparing to host its Creole Heritage Month under the theme Découver Cette Lici, Découver Cow. The month-long celebrations is encouraging St. Lucians to embark on a journey of self-discovery. The celebrations are collaborated between the Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center, Cultural Development Foundation and Events Company of St. Lucia. The official launch takes place on Sunday, September 29, 2019 in Sufre. We begin with 7L at 4 a.m. Then there's the Sulphur Springs Park Wellness Focus and then the official launch with performances, sale of food and whatnot will be happening at the vendors market slash Old Trafford. Um, and that will go up on that will be from one till seven. And there we that our major partner in this is also the Sufra Regional Development Foundation. There are a number of discounted tours and heritage sites or nature sites that um, as part of discovering Sufre um, is being created.
As part of the celebrations, the Cultural Development Foundation is again hosting its Cultural Icon Series. Executive Director Ramona Henry Wynn says this year's icon is Vincent Joseph Yudovic. The Cultural Development Foundation <coughs> will for 2019 Creole Heritage Month be hosting our Cultural Icon Series as well as the Margaret Guafet. Margaret is normally observed on the 17th of October. Our icon series, what it seeks to do is to honor and celebrate persons who have made an indelible contribution towards the arts. We honor those persons because we want to ensure that their work, their history, the life that they have lived in terms of becoming an icon is known by all St. Lucians. We want to ensure that there's this awareness, especially amongst our young persons, that they know who the, pers the contributors to the arts are, who were the architects of St. Lucia's arts and culture. The Minister of Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, says government continues to invest in all aspects of the arts and culture. Our theme for this year's celebrations was all in. And I think... As we, as we look at our Creole heritage, that's what we saw. All different races, all different cultures um, mm -hmm. made it happen for us. And so we'll be getting a chance to celebrate within Creole heritage, you know, that objective of being together as a people um, in the month of October, but more importantly, next week when we unveil the monument or the, the sculpture, you know, symbolizing we are all in. Activities for the month will take place in Labry, Miku, Viewfort, and Grosley. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt the sting to my right leg. And when I looked back, I knew it was a, a, a full snake. You happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake. This is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we can be known for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Mr. Madam, Department of West Coast Ability, we are from us here, and we are to see GIS. As we Television National, we are NTN, Kapusato Nouvelle Aquiol, Kapusato Primus Hutchinson. We are going to see a very good appeal for this type of Caribla to be a classification pour faire plus possible pour trouver aide pour abattre changement de climat dans le jour qu'il y a j'ai espéré aussi autre tristesse récemment par exemple le 1er septembre cyclone Dorian de Cambrelé pays Bahamas a tué plus que 50 monde a quitté plusieurs mille les autres sans un côté pour bité petit pays qui a développé j'ai pleuré go gorge sec qui a crié à vin à son organisation pour coopération économique et développement en Nations Unies pour assistance pour aider ou à battre le changement de climat. Le Premier ministre de Alain Chasné a déclaré que tant pas à faire un accord et que j'ai quitté ce pays là derrière et que juste toujours l'organisation là pas qu'à tant que ce pays là pour ce coup. Le Premier ministre Chasné a plaidé de la quantité qui a coûté ce pays là pour abattre le changement de climat. Particulièrement, l'assurance et plusieurs autres gros problèmes qui ce pays là pas ça a dossier par quoi yon. Premier ministre la crié à sous ses majeurs agences sala, commandé yon, tant pis souple, pour chercher yon solution pour problème de changement de climat. Gon confiance de changement de climat, te pre kou en Nation Uni, le 23 septembre, du moins 74e grand assemblage de Nation Uni en New York.
Organisation de Stade l'Amérique OES te en Babad le 18 pour le 20 septembre pour te délibérer à son meilleure façon pour renforcer économique et secteur de culture. Objectif là, c'est pour reposition secteur culture ou trouver développement sustainable. En délibération, ça là, c'est chef de ce ministère a discuté de diverses façons pour mesurer la contribution du secteur culture et aussi discuter de façons pour renforcer la capacité business et économique de Koyati par des de support technique et financier. Il y a aussi qu'à garder à quelle façon pour poursuivre l'héritage culturel, à façon pour développer et brancher pour trouver une augmentation de l'économie sustainable. Initiative ça là, qu'à venir à l'air comme ministère des Affaires touristiques, c'est ici qu'à préparer pour mesurer à quelle façon à faire des touristiques culture et industrie de Kuyati qu'à pousser l'économie. Objectif là, c'est pour placer attention à ce développement culture et pour pousser à faire touristique croyons vrai pour pousser la vitesse de publicité pour la culture. En particulier, le département de la culture qui a préparé pour structurer, pour réviser la règle nationale de la culture, pour réviser la règle de la culture et l'industrie de la culture. Le ministre de la culture et de l'industrie de la culture, 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 attention pour principalement développer la culture et l'économie de l'industrie de la culture. C'est ici qu'il y a une information institution, construction, industrie, à parmi l'autre façon. Le ministre de Rose dit qu'il a accompli plus à l'industrie de créativité et culture pour faire ce qui programme là en place pour développer leur web de culture et plus de ça, il a continué pour servir de meilleure façon pour développer le programme d'échange et puis l'autre membre OES. On a fait une belle rose, ministre de culture de Kuyati, de l'industrie et Mlle Donalyn Vettet, secrétaire permanent, ministre des Affaires touristiques, qui a assisté à la conférence. Collège Saint-Afelouis et l'Université, c'est l'île de Vierge, là, qui a collaboré pour aider à avancer l'éducation dans un plus haut degré pour cette lycée. De ces institutions d'éducation, ça, là, tu as signé un agrément le 18 septembre qui a fait possible pour les étudiants en tous les deux institutions pour conduire la recherche ensemble. Vice-président pour le développement business UVI, Dr. Halden Davis, dit qu'il y a une de plus d'action de significance en ligne de coopération, de façon pour aider les étudiants hot Sahara pour assister UVI sans le sort. Dr. Davis déclare que UVI ni reconnaissant par une de six plus grandes organisations qui sont capables capable et autorisation par le département de l'éducation. L'Amérique, à part de ça, il dit que toute l'autre branche de l'école en institution UVI ni accepte le département de l'éducation de l'Amérique. Chaque étudiant a fait pour faire études en hauteur de euh, degré en bachelors qui recevrait 6 000 dollars américains tous les années. Chairman pour le board des gouverneurs, c'est Arthur John Calix. Bienvenue à l'occasion de Et dit qu'on chairman et une conférence qui est relation à ça, qui a autant de bénéfices pour tout étudiant qui est engagé à programme à l'université, c'est l'île de Vierge. Il a ajouté que ça a aidé pour cette pour porter, pour profiter économique et société aussi. Et remercie UVI pour avoir l'occasion de ça pour ces étudiants qui travaillent et qui trouvent un salaire aussi. Et ce que ça nous retrouve pour cette nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs, je vous remercie pour vous garder. Je vous donne une invitation pour jouer plus moi encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez besoin de vous donner nouvelle nouvelle. Merci à Pil Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the northern Leeward Islands. Elsewhere, fair to partly cloudy with a few showers. Moisture and instability in the atmosphere will continue to cause cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms over the northern portion of the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour and is expected to affect the region from late Friday into Saturday. Hurricane Lorenzo continues to strengthen. At 11 a.m. today, the center of Hurricane Lorenzo was located near latitude 14.1 north, longitude 31.1 west. Lorenzo is moving toward the west-northwest near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour and this general motion is expected to continue through Thursday. 
A turn toward the northwest is expected late Thursday or Thursday night. Maximum sustained winds have increased to near 85 miles per hour or 140 kilometers per hour with higher gusts. Additional strengthening is forecast during the next couple of days and Lorenzo is expected to become a major hurricane by Thursday. Seas slight to moderate with waves 3 to 5 feet or 0.9 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.53 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.